Hey everybody, it is your least favorite YouTuber ever, Odin, and holy crap, it is finally here. It's Pillars of Eternity Deuce Deadfire. Now, as usual, because I am very unprofessional, I am a day late, literally and a dollar short. The game came out yesterday, and so you've probably already seen a trillion videos of this game by now, so you know everything there is to know, and it's you've seen videos by, you know, experienced and professional YouTubers. Uh, but if for some reason you're watching this on my channel, thank you so much. I am I'm very glad to have you here, and I'll be very happy to disappoint you with my poor gameplay and my equally poor commentary. So, clearly this game does not require too much of an introduction, so let's just get right on into it now. I have not played the game at all, and I did not watch other people play it, and because I wanted to have a fresh experience, and so this is kind of like a, you know, a blind run for me. All right, so looking at the difficulties here, we got story, which is really, really, really easy. We got relaxed, which sounds good to me, but then there's classic. And I, to be fair, I should probably play classic, even though my skill level is not even, it's not even up to par with this. But we're going to do it anyway, just so, you know, everything is, is, is default as it was meant to be. So, we've got some mod, some mod stuff here. So, in trial of iron mode, only one save file is kept for the entire playthrough. If the party is killed, the file is deleted and you must start again. Oh, hell no. Expert mode. Expert mode disables a number of helper features in the game. Players who want to rely on their own faculties and intuition while playing the game should play expert mode. It should have right after that in parentheses. This means Odin should not play expert mode. So I'm guessing these are off by default and that they would light up if they were on. Um, let me click on that. Yeah, okay. So just want to make sure those are both off. Don't got to worry about level scaling. Let's just do it. Oh man, so excited. So excited. And I, I have no idea what the plot is, you know? And I already forgot the plot of the first one. I just remember that your character was a watcher. Like a person who can use those weird, um, well, pillars, usually, <laughs> to like travel and see different things, different times and places. But given my very small brain power, or small amount of brain power, I still did the point of the first game, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, I remember that. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deer, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys. Resulting in his destruction. What kind of assholes are going to wage war against the God of Light? What, what did the God of Light ever do? Infants born without souls. But many believed was punishment for killing a God. Okay, yeah, I remember the Hollowborn stuff. Secluded ruin. You witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. I have waking nightmares of a current life that threatened my sanity, quite frankly. You the man who had led the ritual. A seemingly immortal agent of the gods. Known as Theos Ix Arcanum. That's a pretty sweet name, I'm not gonna lie. In assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos. Ending your visions and resolving the hollow Actually, no, I didn't. I didn't finish the first game because I suck. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient empire of Angris had transformed themselves into gods. Pretty damn sweet. How did they do that? Visions finally put to rest. You retired to the castle of Cadmium, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra. Where you ruled in relative peace and I ruled? Was I... Did I become a king or something? Okay, actually, that was a really good exposition. It's very brief, but it, it kind of gave you all the information you need to know. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. Oh my, is that, is that Matt Mercer? But, 
something got to gnaw at me. Kind of sounds like Matt Mercer. Taking the spirits there will really rest. Maybe the gods weren't finished with us. Dude, Matt Mercer has got some hair. That mane. I would kill for hair like that. Just glorious, glorious mane tossed by the wind. What is going on here? Okay, so what just happened? Was that was that me? Was that my was that my fortress getting wrecked? I hope not. And so you wait to a sleepless world, the in between life and death. Okay. Oh, we're actually... Oh, okay, so we're, yeah, all right, it's time to play. Okay, so what the hell's going on here? All right, so yeah, it does look like Cad Nua was destroyed and that I was kind of killed. And so now it looks like we're walking upon this kind of ethereal path here. Oh, I remember that tree from the first one. Is this the person talking to me, or is... No, is that just a memory? It is just other people, I guess, right? Other watchers. This is pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. Well, it, it, yeah, I guess it was cursed, and it sure as hell is broken now. I hope this isn't the entirety of the afterlife just walking along this path. Just as fun as life. Oh, wait. Okay, we're coming to something. We're coming to a, a pillar of Audra, it looks like. Okay, so it looks like we're being reincarnated once again. Oh man, I God, I love the art style of these games. This looks so good. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. Welcoming Rictus. Rictus, isn't that usually what they used to describe, like, the smile of a, of a defleshed skull? That's an interesting word. Uh, continue. You, you know what, I'm, I, honestly, this is weird, but I'm kind of disappointed at, at all the narration, because I kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to read this stuff myself, <laughs> in my horrible voice acting, uh, voices. I mean, I still could, but, you know what, no, I'm not going to. Okay. All right, so here we are in w wherever we are. See how far we can zoom out. That looks like that. Uh, all right, zoom back in. Well, I guess we'll see what's up with the dude with the rictus, huh? The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives him a courteous nod. Okay, I guess we're not going to have a conversation with him. No, nope, okay. More walking. All right. Yeah, the afterlife is just kicking ass so far. It's like in gym class in middle school when I refused to dress out. And so I would just have to walk around the track in my street clothes, like while everyone else did whatever the hell it is you do in PE. No regrets. Ooh, we playing cards? What's going on here? Or is this probably some sort of tarot reading? Alright. 
All right, tutorials. You know, I honestly, I don't think I'm going to need the tutorials. Believe it or not, the first time Odin's ever said that. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorchen, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent. You know, the narrative... The narrative. The narrator kind of reminds me of, uh, not really a narrator, but the the voice of, I think, your ship or whatever it is in, um, oh god, what is that, in Warframe. Kind of what that sounds like. I know, total tangent, no one cares. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and wait for every single narration to finish here, uh, so hopefully you're able to read through that or you can pause it or whatever, we're going to keep going. Okay. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. Oh, cool. Alright, so we're examining the cards to choose our legacy. Alright, so here's our character creation, I guess. Uh, I was wondering when the hell this was going to happen. Okay, so, Pillars of Eternity 1 histories. So I could be a benevolent soul. What does this mean here? Obsidian created pillars. Oh, okay. I get, hmm. Does that mean there could be, like, player created ones? Uh, oh, you can create your own custom history. Uh, okay, I'm not going to do that, but thanks. That's a cool option. Okay, uh, fair and balanced, survival of the fittest, dark times, keeper secrets, everything bad. Uh, what does it say here? Okay, in Pillars of Eternity, you return the lost hollow-born souls to the Deerwood's children, as you had pledged to Hylia or something. You were kind and merciful to people you encountered. Mm, yeah, fair and balanced. You returned, uh, as you had pledged, to Bereth, whoever the hell that is. Oh, we can mouse over. God of death. Cycles. Like unicycles, bicycles. Uh, doorways, mortality, and inevitability. Okay. Spiral of Fittus. You use the souls of the Hollowborn to strengthen the Deerwood as you had pledged to Galloway, God of the Hunt. Most other choices were made to strengthen you and your allies while punishing and weakening your enemies. I do kind of like that, because I'm trying to think, like, what kind of decisions am I going to make in this game? And, I mean, that sounds, that sounds about right. Sorry about that. The phone's... Nobody ever call. Oh, good, it's a telemarketer. It's really the only people I ever get to talk to. Usually I answer it. I'm like, hey, guys, what's up? And then it's a machine. I'm like, oh. So, uh, dark times. We'll just, just see what it says. Uh, I pledged to the god of entropy, cold, winter, bad luck, famine, and natural disasters. Uh, you, I bet you're the life of the party. Uh, see, keeper of secrets. Uh, is that the same one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, and we'll see what this says. You did everything wrong. You pledged to do the bidding of every god and scattered the souls. I mean, that sounds like what I would do, but not what I would intend to do. That's more of like accidentally like, oh, that you know that idiot Odin? Yeah, we really shouldn't have made him a watcher because he just fucked everything up. Uh, well, they'll learn that soon enough. Uh, okay, we're going to go with Survival of the Fittest. Does everything appear to be in order? But yeah. Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. I really like this mouse over where you can get the, this information here. I like that. In the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movie She's one half of Bereth? Like she points finger in the direction of the dwarf. Is that the other half? Oh, so they're kind of like a syzygy. The male and female aspects of a god. That's interesting. Oh, there's that rictus again. Alright. Uh, no, but let's see. I spoke with other gods in the Hall of Stars, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember. Should I just lie? Yeah, I'm gonna lie. You came to that tower seeking our aid. You prayed for help in reaching Thales, beyond the court of penitence, but would not pledge yourself. Oh, I guess so. she's probably not happy with me then. Still. A pledge unmade stands fairer in this court than a pledge broken. Okay, well, that's good. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement. A, a bell, bell tower with no bell. <laughs> it's kind of like my head. It's like a head with no brain. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card. Okay. You had need of the gods once before. Now we have need of you. Oh, well, that's an interesting position to be in. The statue beneath your castle is the dead god, Aethys. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Hmm. Well, how dead can Aethus be if he was occupying that statue beneath my castle? Anyway, so that was the God of Light, of course. I didn't need it anyway. Oh, so that's what just happened at the very beginning, I guess. Perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced... Okay, am I dead? No, but neither is your body truly alive. Hmm. Well, shit. 
Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood. But your flesh is a soul. Okay, that is until you return me. Alright. Okay, the art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Adra. Alright. You destroyed my castle and killed who knows how many people around it. I've had enough of dealing with the gods. Why should I care? Let's get on with it. Doesn't matter how much you threaten me. Uh, well, you know, I'm kind of vengeful, you know what I mean? And kind of petty, so this sounds really good to me. I'm just going to say this at the end just to make it seem like I'm a, I'm like a, you know, I'm empathetic or sympathetic person. Like, oh, he destroyed my damn castle. Oh, and, he, uh, and who knows how many, like, innocent people, too. But what I really care about is my castle, because he... That, let's, let's be honest, that was fucked up. Okay? I know. It is my business to know. 322 people died? Ugh. Their souls remain in Aethys still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return Well, if the wheel is more of that walking around forever, I mean, I, no, hell no, I don't want that. Let's get on with it. Before you return to Aeora as my herald, you must remember who you were. Okay. When you can picture your own face, Alright, so we get to finish our character creation. Cool! Alright, so we're gonna be a male, and I mean, you know. Uh, let's see, now let's look at the races. Amu, what the hell is the avatar? The mighty Amu are the largest of the Kith races. The word Kith is used to describe the dominant civilized races, including humans. Oh, dude, man, I really like this this mouse over stuff here with this. That's, I don't remember if that was in the first one. Okay, they're not truly aquatic. They have an affinity for water and look ridiculous. And many of their civilizations, such as Rulu, are based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength. I really like the the plus two might modifier, but I God, I couldn't live with myself if I looked like that. Dwarf, what up, man? Okay, by virtue of land covered and number of colonies settles, settled, dwarves are the most well-traveled race in the world. They are commonly found in the Deerwood, the Valian Republics, and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity, so that's the same might bonus, but an added constitution bonus, but then a little less dexterity. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Alright, elves are the dominant race in Ere Glanfath. And the white that wins, and are extremely common in the Deerwood and Idir. Elves are known for their speed and intelligence as well as a commonly isolationist nature. I can get down with that. But I'm going to be playing most likely a fighter or, you know, barbarian type character like I always do. In other words, the character that requires the least amount of intellect. <laughs> uh, godlike. Holy shit. Okay, the godlike are children of the kith. Oh, yeah, we know this. Who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with the gods. I don't know if this is really a blessing here. Uh, these aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Aberrant head shapes are typical. And godlike are unable to wear protective headgear as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Uh, well, that makes sense. Because of their unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. And again, I'm not really big on that. This is These are decent stats here for the human... Uh, what is Orlan? Orlans are the smallest of the kit. What the hell is going on here? Though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin, and hirsute bodies, Orlans are commonly found in Erglanfath, the Ixamidal Plains, and parts of the Deerwood. They're known for their mental intensity and sharp senses. So they would probably make a good thief. Um, maybe magic users? I don't know. So right now I'm kind of... I would really, honestly... I like that there's no drawback here. There's just plus two might and there's no drawback. But again, ah, I just... And I trust me, people. I know it's incredibly superficial for me to, to care about what <laughs> the, the fake, you know, imaginary character looks like. But, I mean, look at this. Um, I would go with a dwarf, except I... And I don't like that dexterity modifier, negative one. I mean, we could compensate for it, of course, with gear and stuff. But, ah, man, I don't like that. Uh, so I might just go with human. Because resolve is good, uh, as you can see, it, it contributes towards reducing hostile effect durations, as well as improving will and deflection defenses. It reflects a character's internal drive, uh, determination, and fearlessness. I think we're gonna go with human. I know. Oh, Odin, you're so adventurous. Go with the most vanilla character, like you always do. Well, vanilla's good. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All right, I remember the first game I played, Meadow Folk. Let's, let's get a refresher on what this is. So. They came from an ancient civilization in the northern hemisphere and gradually migrated south into the equatorial jungles of Idir over several millennia. They're commonly found in Idir, uh, and you get the might and resolve. I wonder if that's in addition to my human might and resolve. Hmm. And when you get bloodied or near death, you get a bonus to accuracy and damage. Ocean folk, eh, it's the same. I don't. 
So they have the same thing. Yeah, we're going to go with Metal Folk. Alright, would you like to make a single class or multi class character? Well, I don't know what the classes are, so I don't know if I want a multi class. Single class characters are entirely focused on their chosen class. They gain access to higher levels more quickly. Multi class characters can select powers from two classes, but gain access to higher level powers more slowly. Uh, multi class characters are not recommended for new players. I'm not a new player, but I might as well be. So we're going to go with single class. And this is usually what I choose major role, crowd control, minor role, defender. Brutes, madmen, berserkers. Uh, I mean, you know how that is. Uh, and you can see our modifiers here. This is all very good. I don't know about... S hmm, I wouldn't have thought that stealth would be part of that. Uh, basically, the only things I would choose would either be barbarian, fighter, maybe a paladin. But, uh, probably not. Um, might just go with just a, a straight-up fighter as opposed to a barbarian. Um... I wonder whose major role would be an attacker. Who who exactly would play that role? It, or do they even have one? Striker. Okay. Uh, crowd control, defender. So a, a monk clearly would be a striker. They usually fight barehanded, which has always been a little weird to me. Uh, support, support. There's a striker, the ranger. Masters of the hunt. Oh, man. Okay. You know what? What the hell? We're going to be a barbarian. That's all, that's just that's how it's going to be. I'm sorry. Okay, subclass. Now, we can have no subclass, or we can be a berserker and basically get these bonuses here. Oh, hardy. Uh, plus two armor. Ooh. Ooh. Plus five constitution. Plus five. Ooh. However, when you frenzy, you get confused. Uh, that's not good. And you can't see your health? No, hell no. And you take raw damage? Oh, hell no. Corpse Eater. Now, this sounds good. Uh, so the bonus is here. Target a hostile deceased kith, wilder, or beast to devour their corpse. Oh, that's awesome. You can heal yourself by cannibalizing bodies. Oh, my dream come true. Uh, <laughs> all rage abilities are increased in cost by one. That kind of sucks. Mage Slayer. Successful melee weapon attacks add spell disruption to the target. Ooh, I mean, that's kind of cool, because I really hate wizards and stuff. But, to be perfectly honest, that's right, boring old Odin. Uh, we're going with no subclass, baby. Yeah. Okay. So, we can choose one of these abilities, looks like. So, we can send the Barbarian into a frenzied state, granting strong and fit inspirations, as well as an action speed bonus. But, we do receive a deflection penalty. And, the yell will give a shaken debuff. And, we can right-click on it to get more information. And it's able... You know what? I like that. That's what we're going to go with for now. That way, yeah. I, I like being able to, to debuff people. That's awesome. Alright, so. Now we see our points here. So, let's see. The gold star means it's highly recommended. The silver star means it's recommended. And then you got your other stuff. So, clearly our might needs to be ridiculous. So, I'm, I'm just going to start at 18. Then, of course, we need Constitution. That's our health. We've got to be able to soak up the damage. We do want Dexterity also. I, I mean, we really do. We want our action speed to not be incredibly slow. I think eh, that looks good to me. Yeah, for sure. All right, so where am I from? Uh, we could be from Adir or Eider or whatever the hell it is, which would give us plus one Resolve. You get plus one dexterity. I mean, uh, certainly you can kind of pause and read that on your own if you'd like to. I'm just looking at the buffs or the modifiers. Plus one resolve. Is that the same as the first one? It is. Plus one intellect. Plus one constitution. Eh, that could be good. Because we... Ooh, and more might. I don't really need more might, but maybe I do. Ooh, it's weather's unpredictable. You know what? I like... Let's just... I mean, I probably should buff up one of my weaker ability scores. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. No, I ain't going to do that. I'm stupid. Okay, what was your job? And this will also give us uh, some skill boosts here. Uh, colonist, drifter, explorer. That could be interesting. Hunter, laborer, mercenary. Uh, this will probably be what we go with. Yeah, this is pretty much the kind of character I want to have. Someone who... A very grog-like character from Critical Role. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's what we're looking for. I would like to rage. All right, so available weapon types. So we, what are we going to specialize with? Well, you know I like my two-handed weapons. You know what I mean? Uh, so greatsword is probably one of the things I'm going to be looking for. 
Uh, okay, so what is this? So the great sword is renowned for its ability to cause deadly wounds even against terrible beasts. Though it's relatively slow and uses both hands, it's truly devastating when it's used by a skilled warrior. That I am not, but I don't care. So we can put one weapon into the great swords, and then because there, we'll no doubt find ourselves in situations where we don't have access to a great sword or any two-handed weapon. I should probably. Oh, let's say. Half sword or warhammer? Oh man, I want to. I kind of want to stick with swords, to be honest. Hmm. You know what? Let's just in case. Let's spread it around. Let's try. Well, let's try battle axes too. For if we're going to do one-handed, uh, because this can cause bleeding wounds, and I really, really like the sound of that. All right, and then we got a bunch of portraits. We can portraits. Sorry, we can choose here. Uh. Hmm. You know what, let's hold off on the portrait for a second and first actually deal with the character. I don't really mind the way he looks. I don't want to spend a lot of time. I'm almost near the, f the end of this first episode, and we haven't really gotten to the game proper yet, which is not really a surprise, and I don't have a problem with it, and I hope you don't. Oh, let's see what kind of styles we got going on here. I mean, I'm just really not feeling any of this. Definitely not. There's the old Geralt of Rivia. I am... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not feeling this stuff. Is that a mullet? Can I... That's like that's a very strange kind of mullet, but I think it is a mullet. I think it qualifies. So we're gonna go with that. Yeah, there we go. I like that. It's it's simple, you know. Uh, when it comes to the facial hair, oh, I, oh, oh hell no. Oh, uh, what's the difference between these two? Oh, look up here. Look up here. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it gets a little more glorious down here, does it? Ooh, got some braids. Ooh. Some braids, but yeah, that looks a little weird to me, and that's just all over the place. Yeah, we're gonna go with the. Yeah, I like that. We're gonna go with that right there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, can we change the hair color? Uh, let's just. Oh, that's not his hair color. Uh, we're gonna go. We're definitely gonna go with the goth look here. I want all black, everything. Skin, that's fine. Don't care. I uh, wanted to kind of blonde him out a little. There we go. All right, voice. Cocky. Feisty. Kind. I kind of like Stoic, to be honest. You'd think I'd go with Cocky or Feisty, but I'm going to go with Stoic. All right, and then Pose. Can I zoom out? No? Okay, whatever. Average. Heroic. Oh, I like that. You know, I'm not even going to look at the other ones. We're going with Heroic. Oh, I forgot. Let's go back. Let's go back. I forgot about the portrait. I just... It really bothers me if this doesn't at least kind of match up to the way the character looks. But, oh, man, I'm not really... So Ooh, there we go. Hey, actually, I think I remember this portrait from the first one. That'll work. That'll work. Our Ragnar Lothbrok right there. Yeah, and that's still the same good. That's good. That's good. Oh, did I have to go down here and then hit next? Yeah. All right. So finally, 28 minutes later, after starting the game, we are naming our character. <laughs> it's not my fault. And there's the review of everything. Looks good. Go forth now, Watcher, as my hero. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, all right. Well, that sounds good to me. To I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have the, the power to open the gateway from the in between to the waking world. All right. Okay, so we're chasing the God of Light, Aethus, who was apparently killed, but he's not dead, of course. But uh, who the hell knows? Pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. What? The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span. That's weird. What the hell did she just do? do not fear him. Oh, it's a chime. What? Well, what? Oh, it's like a security measure for her. Well, that, eh, you know, whatever. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Oh, please, no more. Not not more walking on some sort of celestial pathway. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do, actually. It's kind of cool how it assembles itself before you. Yeah, I like that. These candles are... I guess it doesn't matter if anything is floating. I was going to say, oh, these candles are just floating in midair, but everything is floating in midair. So, just more evidence of my stupidity. Nothing to see here, folks. Keep on moving. All 
Alright, please tell me there's like a portal here back to the regular ass world. Or is... what? Who are you? Goosebumps rise on Eater's uh, arms at your approach, but he seems unaware of your presence. Oh, that's kind of creepy. So I guess that's my body, huh? Sweet! Ooh, are we on a ship? Oh, man. Eater, how's it going, man? I just had the strangest, longest, most boring character creation dream you could ever imagine. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I I'm kidding. Return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even totes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining. Oh, he was dabbing. No way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feel? Uh, so we don't have the required uh, skill levels here to, ha to have these responses. That's why we don't see them. Who are you? That would probably be a dumb question. I'm probably, probably supposed to know who he is. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, well, let's just say alive. Alive's a big improvement. And that sounds like Matt Mercer, too. I'm probably wrong, and I'm like, there's all these voice actors out there like, Odin, you shithead! Thinking everybody's Matt Mercer, goddammit! That was me. That was my big break. I hate to cast a pull over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Who the hell is this? Who's talking? Is it this thing? The voice echoes from yeah, it is. The, the remains of the, the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethos possessed the statue of Maros Nua, and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all men. Yeah, yeah, I already know this, actually. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survive. Okay, even just barely. The further Aethos withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him. Okay, so we are on a ship. So we're in the Deadfire Archipelago. Alright. So it's at the eastern edge of the known world. And of course, you can go ahead and pause if you want to read that whole, uh, that whole info thing right there. I know not how. Seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity. Yeah, I know. How could you know all that? You've been faking on us. Uh oh, what's going on now? An older man with ale sour breath. And Grim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? That's a saucy bust. Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. Oh, so he's the captain, okay. Eater or whatever. Alright, looks like we're going to be fighting right from the start. Awesome. Okay, everybody. This is where we're going to have to cut off the first episode. I know we didn't get too much action, but we're going to... The second episode, it's coming up real soon. Coming up real soon. Okay, so just hang in there. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching this with me. I can't believe that anyone would watch my channel. But if you are watching it, I love you. And uh, probably a marriage proposal is coming soon somewhere down the road. I don't really know. But anyway... Uh, and by the way, don't hold me to that. I can't be held responsible for anything I say, because I usually don't think before I speak, as you can probably tell. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you very soon for the next episode of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire.